Hi guys, it's the Phoebe's World Platform and uh, on the show today we're going to talk to a group of four people, very special people, embarking on a very well, how do I describe the journey? What adjectives would I use? Because it's, uh, it's a tough one, leaving all you can do, all other things that other people think that are important, leaving all those things away from their, their comfort, their their homes just embarking on this special and wonderful journey that has an impact on Africa. Well, today we're talking to the messengers of the message. And it's, uh, it's a group comprising of four people. There's a representation from South Africa, Ghana, Benin, Burkina Faso. And it's amazing. I first got to meet these people during the Africa um, Achievers Awards that was held in Freetown, the 2019 edition in Freetown at Golden Tulip Hotel. Well, coincidentally, we are again at Golden Tulip Hotel, where we always broadcast the Phoebe's World platform from. And these people performed, they sang a good song. And where I was seated, I had goosebumps. When they were singing, I'm like, oh, okay, these are the people from South Africa, because you know, they, they sang like the South Africans do. But I got to find out that um, it's not just from South Africa. It's a blend of, you know, all these four different countries. So today we're going to talk to them. What is their journey? What's the goal? Why go around Africa to preach the message they are preaching? And what is the message from the messengers? Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our guests. I'll let you guys do the introductions. Because one, I don't want to embarrass myself with the names. <laughs> Secondly, I know you all have your titles to add to that. So yes, oh, I just realized we're well, all four ladies against the one gentleman. It's well. I'll start with you. So an introduction of your name, of course, with your title and the country you're from. So you all get to know who is from what country. Let's start with you. Thank you very much. My name is Prince Malasi from South Africa. I'm the leader and the founder of this movement called the Messengers of Messages. Hmm. And you are? I'm Princess Keihat Zato from Benin, and I'm a poet of the Messengers of Messages. Wow, yes. I'm Princess Stella Aisha Sayon from Kina Faso. I'm the vocal lead singer of the group, and I'm the spokesperson as well. She was the one that gave me the goosebumps. <laughs> yes, my darling. I'm Princess Ajibanya Lebayan Sinjo from Ghana, the poet of the Messenger of Messages. Hmm. Okay, welcome. Thank you all for joining the Phoebe's World platform today. I like the way you guys are dressed. And yes, that night they were similarly dressed like this again. I love it. Every time I see these people, they're nicely dressed. Unlike us with our European fabrics, they're always, you know, representing. Let's talk about the messengers of the messages. What's this movement about? Well, this movement actually, it represents the unity of Africa, uh, the oneness of Africa, peaceful Africa, cultural Africa, positive Africa, Africa with positive solutions actually inspired by Kwame Nkrumah because mm. back then he had a vision you know he was ahead of his time mm -hmm. of thinking of one continent and thinking of uh, positive Africa thinking of uh, Africa doing for themselves by themselves for, by themselves and uh, of course we had people like Thomas Sankara you had Lumumba uh, Julius Nyerere you had uh, Samora Marshall and others, of course, Sekutore, you know. So, um, of course, you know, I've been, I've been there in America, traveling around the world and, and uh, doing great stuff, representing myself, not representing my 
continent all representing South Africa mm. as an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008, when this breakout called xenophobia happened in South Africa, then it was just that. Were you in South time. Africa at that time? Yes, I was in South Africa at the time, I remember. Mm. Uh, it was not long that I was, you know, come from America. And when he started, it was just like, no, this is not happening. Uh, you know, because I, I'm, I'm a former slave, I would say, because any person that lived during the apartheid, you know, the pain of slavery of South Africa, you were, whether you like it or not, whether you were rich or not, it, it didn't matter, but and knowing the the, uh, the the slogans that we sang about uh, Kwame Nkrumah, all the brothers and the leaders that fought the liberation between us, those were our people. We knew that our some of the our people, freedom fighters, were housed in those countries, and uh, and we were burned to go and travel those countries, and uh, and they fought. Of course, they housed. Our freedom fighters, um, Kondo, Suzu, Apla, and other people, we knew that we had our people there. When it came out, I was like, this is not happening. And definitely, it was a, it was a big shock, and seeing us as South Africans killing, fighting our brothers, you know, and I just, it was with me, and it continued again. I said, no, I got to do something. Now at that point, you you had been an artist, you yeah. had been in America, yeah. and then you're from South Africa. You were there during that period. What? Well, maybe this this would be like a uh, well. It's what inspired um, the setting up of the messengers of the messages. Yes. But what particular happening took you to that day where you said, you know what? It's time for a movement called the messengers of the messages. Yes. What happened is that I've, I've realized there was a cultural shock between mm -hmm. South Africans and the other brothers from our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely it's, it's a lot of things. So, okay, let me just make a shot. What I said, I said, no, I realized that we do not understand our brothers' cultures because we were, we, as I was saying, we were contained. Mm -hmm. We are not allowed to travel. South Africans, we are not people that travels. Of course, it's a culture of apartheid because we were not allowed it because when you travel out of South Africa, you'll be known as or recognized as a tourist mm. because people who went out, it was just to go to land mm. to fight back. So this culture came with us. And you know, in South Africa, we did not know, we only knew Zimbabweans, uh, uh, not even Zambian Zimbabweans, the, uh, people from Lesotho, the Swaziland people, and a little bit of Malawians, but others from that, no. We thought everyone was a Zaire, and we were calling all the Africans. We didn't know about what is Nigeria or what is Ghana. We just had a little bit of those countries, Burkina Faso, Togo, Southern. We didn't know because that was not part of our syllabus because they gave us Bantu education. So for me, and I said, no, I have to take, I have to go. So I left South Africa for the past nine years, 2010. I say I'm going to Africa, to Africa, because we South Africans, we think that we are South Africans, but we are in Africa, but it is the mentality. And I just say I'm going to Africa to learn about their culture. That's interesting. Someone from Africa saying I'm going to Africa to that's, learn about their culture. You see, that's what it, it was in my mind. strange. It, it is very strange. That's what even in South Africa we still have the same thing that I'm in South Africa, but the other parts, you remember? It was apartheid. Mm. You are in South Africa, they are in Africa. So we still have the culture. And you know, for me, I say I want to learn how, you know, their culture. I want to learn uh, the, the, their humanity, their problems, share with them and understand exactly. Because I realized it was a cultural uh, 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 shock. Of course, certain things that are, of course, economy, because we're all fighting for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, with my experiences, I realized this, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm well talented. I'm all run artist when it comes to dance, acrobat, singing, sculpt, whatever, you name it. And I started going around and, and 
learning. I was in Gambia too, learning their culture, learning the way of doing things and developing, sharing my ideas, sharing my knowledge. Of course, international, especially in South African uh, experience, a positive one. Mm. And especially the youth and underprivileged, when people are down, I say, no, during apartheid, I stood. You can say no. We fought for our freedom, our independence. We wanted to be our own president in our own countries. So you, you cannot say it's difficult in your country. No, I was dreaming of this freedom. You have it. Stand up and do it. You are surrounded by many things. So you started the journey in 2010. Exactly. To now 2019, that sums up to nine, nine years. years. Nine years, yes. What messages have you been sending out to the countries that you go to visit? It, simple. You can do it. Be peaceful. It's about peace. And you can do it. You need to accept each other. You need to tolerate each other. You need to share spaces. You need to collaborate. You need to understand each other. Because definitely, and, and understanding one's culture, it does not matter where they come from. Because, you know, sharing the whole, my history and looking at, sharing their history, I realized, no, we are all the same people and we shouldn't live and stuck in the past. Because if you always talk about colonization or apartheid, you will be colonized by the past. So we're living in the past. We need to think about Africa. We don't have to think about Europe. We have to think about making it in Africa. We have to look at for example, we have, if I'm rich, I need to invest to the youth or my neighbors. I have to uh, uh, share my life, share my little bit of my interest or a little bit of my, my, my benefits with some of the people. Because when I travel, I help youth in underprivileged to raise some funds, raise some money for their project, show them how do you do, how do you write, how you do things for, the, for, for, for yourselves. So that's what I've, I've really learned and I've really seen because those empty spots and spaces were able to open up a room of understanding and a room of, of trying to get things out of nothing, out of the situation. So that's what I've learned. And in South Africa, remember that in South Africa we think that you people out of South Africa I would say uncivilized. Hmm. And, uh, no, and, no, sorry for the word, undeveloped. Mm -hmm. But in South Africa, the country, what I've learned, the country is developed, but people are not developed. But in West Africa, the countries are not developed, but people are developed. So that's the contradicting part. E exactly. And South that's Africans are not developed, developed, but the country itself is, is, is developed. developed. And in Western Africa, Africa the countries are not, not developed, developed, but, but the people, people are, are developed. developed. But what they Interesting need, theory. But what they need to understand in West Africa is that they have that oomph. Mm. I've met them in America, in Europe, whatever. When they get there, they work hard. But when they're at home, they relax. They complain. But, you know, you people, you've been there before us. So South Africa, you remember, my people, my generation, we had a bunch of education. We didn't have education at all. So it's like zero. So even myself, because I was very lucky because I've been traveling. Actually, we we're forced to speak Afrikaans. So through traveling in my little wisdom, I was able to pick up one, two, three. You know, if someone, especially I went to grade seven, that's all, and it was like nothing. It was just to know A, B, C, D, whatever. Your history was zero, nothing else. Mm -hmm. You were taught a white man's history. So this is the same thing that is still in our system. So we need to kick out. That's why this year I'm going back with my team to continue to spread the message of reintegration. Because when people, when other people that, uh, from our neighboring countries, when they were allowed to come in South Africa, because you wouldn't come to South Africa then as, as, as a reunion. It means that you have something. So there was no dialect there was no even our country didn't create a dialect to re to introduce them to us mm. and talk and teach our children these are the people who helped us these are our brothers these are africans like you we know who we are but we're thinking we are better than you and it's something that we created before we're told it's like going to america african-american will think is better than you and you look and say no you we are the same because we don't own anything we need to come together and Start to build this continent together, whether you are in America or whatever, you need to meet 
you are developed, you have an opportunity to be with the developers. Your continent is not developed. Why can't you come back sharing knowledge and we build this continent together? Now, as you yes. say that, that's the cue. Africans yeah. coming on board back to Africa. So we build Africa yes. together. Yes. So Africa gets to be amongst the developed continents yes. in the world for the benefit of all Africans. This is the Phoebe's World Platform. We are here at the Golden Tulip Hotel. We'll take a message from our sponsors and would we'll continue. And this program is proudly sponsored by Rokel Commercial Bank, Sierra Pharmatech and Shalima Trading. Sim couple allow old and young to make deposits and withdraw cash from their account at any time and anywhere. With Rokel Commercial Bank Sim couple, you can send and receive money at any place and any time. Rokel Commercial Bank don't make life better for we all. Farmers from across the globe have a strong bond and passion for the soil, which leads to nurturing of the land. What they need is the support of high-performing agricultural solutions. A wide variety of implements like rotavators, self-propelled combines, Dix plow, MB plow, Dix harrow, cultivator, reversible MB plow, and other implements. We are confident that the coming years will bring greater results with the trust and confidence of our associates, business partners and customers on our products and services. Sonalika Tractor's range from 20 horsepower to 120 horsepower. We are ready to address the common challenge of food security, highest customer satisfaction, and superior agricultural solutions. For distribution and dealership, contact Shalima Trading Company, 40B Wilkinson Road, Freetown. Telephone 099-90-9012. Sonalika. Welcome back from that break. This is the Phoebe's Will platform and we're still at Golden Tulip Hotel. That was a message from our sponsors. When you made the decision to get this movement the messengers of the messages before then were you dressed like this or was it the movement that inspired the dress code well i was if i show you my pictures i was americanized oh wow yes <laughs> before i show you won't believe i was americanized as i say Red carpet in, in America, I, I met them all. Michael Jackson family, Western Snaps, Wycliffe John, you know, I've been with those people. Uh, no, definitely I was, you know, remember in South Africa, we did not want to be identified as us, because they, they told as us. As us, you mean as Africans? Yes, us, okay. as Africans. Uh, but luckily enough, I was inspired by the Zulus, mm. because the Zulus, no, they kept tribes, Zulu Shangarians and Vengeance, of course, other tribes, but they kept 
they are roots strong. The so that's why you're now dressed. That's why I went back to my roots. I say I cannot talk about my African values while Without I'm dressed. Without looking up. like an no, African. I say I'm going back. I will dress the way I think I need to dress because Africa there are no rules. As long as you cover your body, you are you are inspired by your environment, and I will dress African so I can be an ambassador of my message. Now, as you say that, I'll go to the ladies. Yes. You ladies look lovely and beautiful in this attire. It's mwah. Thank you. But as young women, you know, other young women, even in Africa, we rather go about, you know, dressed in modern time fashion, Western fabric, you know, doing things like, you know, we're Westerners, well, blending both together. I'd like to know all of you individually at what point you made the decision or first, what, when, when did you learn about the messengers of the messages and why did you make the decision to be a part of it? So maybe I'll start with you there. Okay. Where did you hear about the messengers of the messages and why did you decide to leave the comforts of your country and embark on this journey? Okay. I'll start a little brief okay. about my life. Uh, first of all, I studied insurance and management studies. Wow. And I, I was a qualified insurer, and also I had an art gallery. But then I had this passion so much that I traveled overseas looking for a teacher, a designer. Mm. So I couldn't find that teacher. I came back. I was uh, residing in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Then one day I came across our leader, Mr. Prince. So I decided to let go be an insurer and to follow the art because that it, I believe that it was my calling. I had a strong passion for it. And after I joined, I left everything. I noticed that it was not only about art, but it was more than art, about humanity, learning how to uh, talk to people, everything including art. So, this is so you, you, do you ever get to a point where you regret making that decision? Never. Hmm. Never, okay. because in life, when you are looking for something mm -hmm. and you uh, you uh, you receive it, you know that God has answered you. Because before I met Him, I was uh, apart from being an artist as well, also an issue. I was uh, doing promotion, looking for somebody in the newspapers, magazine, you know. So when I saw Him, I knew that yes. This is the person I'm looking for, and that God has answered. <laughs> She's smiling. Yes, let me hear your story. <laughs> yes, well, mine is, um, let's say, uh, I was said to be South African even before I met with him. So in my country and even in other different countries. Especially when you sing, you're always, you know, you're always mistaken for a South African. Mm -mm. And I used to sing in Swahili. Oh, wow. I used to sing more in English than in French, being even being uh, from a French country. country. Yeah. Yes. So and um, uh, uh, the first time I met him, because I was introduced to him by a friend of mine, um, Let's say I was looking, I can tell I was looking for someone like him. Why? I was previously working with a, a great producer, mm. uh, the best of West Africa. I was also working, uh, I did the studies in project management. I was working as a consultant wow. in uh, operational performance. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I've been traveling, singing, I had a first album, but I could feel like something was missing. and. I used to say that I know that I have something to take in South Africa. I don't know what, but something is waiting for me there. Until I met with him and then I understood. Mm -hmm. And then I just understood that. And when I met him, he told me, the first time he came to my rehearsal, he heard me singing and he told me, I'm going to teach you singing. I didn't know what he was talking about because I had an album, I was touring and all. Until I started to work with him, he's the one actually who's doing me the vocal coaching. Wow. And I understood what he was talking about. I understood that being an artist is not only about um, having the talent. Mm -hmm. The talent is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's the whole package. It's the behavior. It's the way you talk. It's the way you dress. So coming to our dressing, today I can say that I'm proud to represent my culture. Everywhere I go, uh, everyone will stop and ask, where do you come from? Definitely they know I'm from Africa, but which part of Africa? Because this way of dressing um, is taking us back. So it's a, 
ancient but futuristic. This is the Africa uh, we imagine when we come to Africa. This is the Africa we want uh, to look to look like. You know, a decent Africa, royal Africa, uh, uh, colorful Africa, unique Africa, and I'm happy today to represent that. Before and you met him and became a member of yes, the team, yes. were you dressing like this? I used to dress African, but not uh, like as, this. But not like this. Mm -hmm. Well, this more, kind of African. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to dress African. Uh, that's why I was even, uh, people thought I was South African. Mm -hmm. I used to tie my scarf like South Africans, mm -hmm. you know. But I used also sometimes to, to, to dress formal as anyone else because mm -hmm. I was going to the office like anyone else. Mm -hmm. But being part of uh, this movement is something great for me because it's making me not only a, a, a citizen of my country called Burkina Faso, but I just became a citizen of the world, you know, touring around sharing my knowledge, uh, my experience with the youth, impacting their lives. And you're the spokesperson of the team. Exactly. How long have you been with the, the movement? Uh, five years now. How long have you been with the movement? Nine years. Nine years. Wow. You, he started in 2010. Yes. And then, which means you joined shortly after he formed it. Yes. yes. Okay. And then you, it's been five years. Yes. Yeah. So you were, move, you were moving along then five years later. Well, four years later, if yes, my mathematics exactly. is right, then you yes. came along. All right, okay. Let me come to you now to hear your story. How did you become a member? I was studying um, interior design in mm. Morocco. And I like what is art, all what is art, singing, dances, and uh, interior design. And I was looking for someone who have already what I'm looking for mm. and can um, help me to, to, to learn more. So when I, I was, I say I was uh, studying interior design and I was going to one center, cultural center in Morocco to learn to play guitar. And I found them uh, decorating the place, and I said, "This is my, my, I would say, my department. I like that, and I wanted to join the, them and work in the place with them." So I, I realized that is uh, all in one, and I said to myself, "In this opportunity and the chance that I, I need to to take, that's how I joined them." Wow! For how long have you been with them? It's my second year. Oh, wow. She's the newest She's member the of the newest, team. Yes, wow. Yes. Okay. So along the nine years journey, you've been able to recruit nine people. Do you have space for more recruitment? Yeah. It's not only people that uh, really we have some members, of course, because mm. a lot of time it's not about the journey. Mm. You know, you don't choose the journey. Jenny will choose you. Mm -hmm. So um, people, of course, when you... Even me, I know this is a calling because even people under ask me a question. You come from a such place called South Africa and you just left for nine years and go to this country. Yeah, when you guys are out touring other countries, how do you survive? Well, that's my mission. is to teach people how to survive. This is what I am here for. It's to start from nothing to mm. something. You remember, it is not how much you have. It's about your vision. And when you have a good vision and a structure, of course, there is someone who's looking for a person like you somewhere. So this is the know-how. So this is what I've been doing all the time. I go, remember that I'm not financed. I don't take money from my house. I don't take money from my country. I don't get sponsored from anybody. It's to show people that you have a reason to live here and everything is there for you so you need to live. wait 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 wait. let me understand this so exactly. you don't you don't take money from home yes you don't take anything yes. you just pack up your things yes. and you move along exactly where do you stay how do you eat okay those basics how okay. do you get them when i get to a country sometimes i go to a country with money for tra with transport because for example when i was in gambia i had to live all what I started with the youth because I develop, I put the youth together and our women together, we start business. I teach them the art, how to do the, the like the interior design, mm. sculpturing, how to create a business 
whatever. When I have the money, before I leave, I share, for example, I'll go, for example, with a friend, I live in a small place. First, I say, look, I don't have anything, but I'm a gold. I show a prophet, I say, my main thing is to fight poverty and problem and face problems because I'm here to teach you how to face problems. Because that's important, mm. you know, because we run away. And we will start to do projects. I say, okay, let's go around. I say, oh, this hotel is not good. Okay, this is what I can do. Let's ask, oh, you're building. Okay, I've got this kind of thing that I want to offer. It's different. Give me this room. Let me just do the space. Of course, you'll jump. So I teach them all this kind of a market, natural, without even people didn't go to school. This is how you market yourself. So making money in the country, develop the money. From there, I say, oh, I'm heading to a next country. I'll take all the money. Of course, I'll have a relation mm -hmm. with other people who say, come to my country. So, okay, you give me a place for one week only. Okay, then I'll take the money, a car or anything that I have. I live in that country. I go to that country with my back and start from zero, from the struggle. This is my mission to teach people how to make it out of nothing, from zero to here. And how successful has that mission no, been so far? Very successful. Because every country there where I left, I have people now that are making, you know, some of them, are there in, they're in America, Europe, because I always teach them how to, especially artists. Mm -hmm. I train them and I found them connection in America because I have a big market. I give them the international standard of Africa so that they can be able to uh, uh, represent their own and help the artists. For example, in Guinea. Uh, in Guinea, have helped a lot of lot, lot of youth, even in Gambia, all the countries, of course. So, yes, it has been successful. As I'm talking to you right now, I've been working with these kids uh, called Bone Breakers. They are the toughest performers in the whole United States. As I'm talking to you right now, they are all over the billboard. They are managed by the former uh, uh, manager of the Jackson Five, the Commodores, the Manhattan, which is Cedric Walker. That I've been training them acrobat and dance. So they are there right now as I'm talking to you right now. And uh, there are some of the kids who won Africa Got Talent that was in Ivory Coast called Fresh Sellers that are trained them. They won the whole Africa thing. They are in America right now because my aim is go there with a pride. Not go there as a beggar. Don't go to America as a beggar. Go with your dignity and you must be on demand. So mm. You must be on demand. Yes. That's another cue we'll take to get a message from our sponsors. This is the Phoebe School Platform, proudly sponsored by Sierra Pharma Tech, Rokel Commercial Bank, and Shalima Trading. Sim couple allow old and young to make deposits and withdraw cash from their account at any time and anywhere. With Rokel Commercial Bank Sim couple, you can send and receive money at any place and any time. Rokel Commercial Bank don't make life better for we all. Farmers from across the globe have a strong bond and passion for the soil, which leads to nurturing of the land. What they need is the support of high-performing agricultural solutions. A wide variety of implements like rotavators, self-propelled combines, Dix plow, MB plow, Dix harrow, cultivator, reversible MB plow, and other implements. We are confident that the coming years will bring greater results with the trust and confidence of our associates, business partners and customers on our products and services.
personally cut Cactus range from 20 horsepower to 120 horsepower. Are ready to address the coming challenge of food security, highest customer satisfaction, and superior agricultural solutions. For distribution and dealership, contact Shalima Trading Company, 40B Wilkinson Road, Freetown. Telephone 099-90-9012. Sonalika. All right, welcome back. Message from our sponsors. This is the Phoebe's Wool Platform, and we are at uh, Golden Tulip Kimbima Hotel, a beautiful venue where you could just come easily, hang out, and do a lot of other things if you want to. Yes, the messengers of the messages. We have a situation where in Africa, our young people, the resources of Africa, those who should be in Africa to build and develop Africa. Well, some have the thought they would only succeed out of Africa. Hence the reason we have our brothers and sisters embarking on Temple Oon. Going to countries like Libya where they are treated as slaves, they are killed, their body organs are, are, are exported because now that's the new market in the world. That's where people make a lot of money. It's very expensive. Human kidney, your liver, your heart, it's expensive. And just a couple of days ago, I read an article online about um, a farm being discovered in Libya where they harvest human organs. And they've kept these Africans there in cages. God knows for how long. They come without anesthetic. They just perform a surgery on you like that to, to harvest your organ. Yet, our people see all these things, but still, you would see our young people, the next opportunity they have to jump on board these boats to head out of Africa, they would grab at it. How do we get our younger people in Africa to have that sense of, I would say, African patriotism to say, I can stay back home. Whatever the challenges, whatever the problems, I can use divine inspiration from God to fix the problems in Africa rather than traveling out of the continent. How do we encourage them to stay? Right. Um, this has been my challenge and I've been fighting that. As I'm saying that even in Morocco, uh, I had a program that I've done with the migrants. Uh, uh, you know, I met a lot of them because I was, I was I've gone, you know, it's amazing because sometimes I just, the country invite me to receive the award from here, like here. Mm -hmm. We're just here for three days. Mm -hmm. And you know, talking to people, I found out there are a lot of problems in the country. So mm -mm, here I am. I got to deal with the situation. Of course, first it comes with the media. Uh, you know, young kids now have realized that it's about alike. They want to be seen being part of the developed countries. You see, if you look at it, actually, my research is not about poverty because most of them, they use a lot of money. They spend a lot of money to travel. Thousands of money. You know, like some, they tell me the uh, $1,000, $2,000 to go just to be part yeah, of them. Yeah, you even have some of them whose parents help them. They sell exactly. um, family property, uh, to go. sell lands, houses, and things just to get the money to send them. Okay. As opposed to what maybe they could, have, they could have used those money as a capital to start up even a business. Exactly. But they have that thought that once you are abroad, out of Africa, there are a lot of opportunities. You become successful financially. You're just, it's just, it's a mindset. It's just a fantasy, imagination. Of course, you see, as I'm saying, this music videos, they want to be part of this music videos because some of the people who are, you know, who are there, they post around next to cars and something. And most of them, they don't even have houses. They found out that when they get there, it's all fake. Of course, some people are, they have that opportunity to make it. And when they come back, they don't tell people the truth. Some of the people who are there, they make some drug deal, uh, dealings. They have certain things to make money fast. But you, coming back home, even making money, you don't invest. You build your big house, you build your walls, your language has changed, the character has changed. And next door neighbor, 
talk. He laughed like you. But why can't you follow him? You see, those are the things that really. And as I was talking, it starts with our own culture. Mm. If we, if we develop and protect our own culture and give values to our culture and understand that the world of Africa is still grounded, is still uh, 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 grounded under this soil, and understand that when you're poor, it's because you have to be rich. You are born to suffer in order for you to make it. You must have a history of your life that this is how I made. You know, that's why I say if you look at it, someone who's up there, ask, don't ask him how he succeeded. Ask him how many times did he fail before he su got succeeded. Because if you think about his success, you don't look at the holes. So that's, a, that's the most important thing. That is why I'm saying that the values of Africa, I was talking to the people uh, with the, uh, from the Ministry of Cult Tourism, Tourism and, and Cultural Affairs. Giving them, giving them the ideas how to generate money, contribute it, distribute it to the youth, so that they, they will be able to be innovative when it comes to culture, so that again, plow it back to the center. So there will be a circulation. So these kids will be busy. They will be able to do certain things. If they have to go to overseas, they will go there with contracts and be able to do and come back. So we need to create something saying, that's why my slogan is, make it in Africa. So it means make it right here. So it is possible because... Yes. And how do we get our young people to make it in Africa when uh, um, some of the challenges that um, are faced in West Africa, uh, similar challenges that other African countries face, challenges of unemployment. You do have a lot of people who graduate from universities annually, but yet we don't have enough jobs to cater for them. How do we get our young exactly. people to make That's it in Africa when not even those who are yeah. educated don't get a job? How much more those who are not properly educated, those who stopped halfway through education? How do we cater for all these people to stay in Africa and make it in Africa? Thanks. And that's what caused xenophobia. Remember our system, education. We have to structurize it because you see, I always say that the problem of work, remember, we create job seekers. We train job seekers. We don't train Not job creators. creators. So our thing is you go to qualify to be someone after that, I have to look for a job. No, we have to educate people how to create the job. So once we have the system and the slogan and the, we change, we'll be, because I even ask some people in their countries, don't, don't take some courses and, and you find that even in their country, they don't have that kind of a job. It costs you to go down. So I always ask this question. I was I asked one king. I say if you have a, a dam, full, uh, for example, a, a dam of, um, and you find you have fifty thousand fish inside, you train hundred thousand fishermen to come and fish there. What you'll be left with? Hmm. Nothing. Nothing. So we need to understand. This is a system, and it's it's a system that we need to create in our job, in our kids, because we want to work smart. We don't want them to work hard. So they need to understand that this is what we need to learn, how to make it and create. It will, it will start to develop and, and find its own solution. Africa need to teach, crea create and train job seekers. Everybody say, I want to be a boss. I don't want to work for somebody. And if they have that, that kind of a mentality and energy, then you will see. Because as you say, we train qualified for what? We don't have. If you want to create, uh, uh, I mean, uh, graduate uh, 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 1,000 pilots in Sierra Leone, which, which you're not going to do. So you have to have an advice, even in the universities, they must have what you call, a, 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 what you call a job control studies. Like, okay, you can't, because now I think we are overloaded. This course will be advise people based on that. You cannot just go to school like that. This is the cause because during South Africa, during apartheid, remember when you had our liberation, we said first we used to work hard. We said no, now I don't want my son to work like me, my daughter to work like me. I don't want you to work with with the overall and, and, and tools. I want you to work with a pen. So when the brothers who came in, who had knowledge like carpentry, doing shoes and other things, when they started to to make their businesses, we didn't want them to do anything. Start to open the little shops. Say uh uh, you gotta be. When they start to make it, and when we have a problem of job, 
Mm. What happened now? We went back say, mm, they stole our jobs. And the people who are saying that, there are people who has, who, who's got all this qualification, but now overflight it. So we need to learn how to focus on job creation. Individual, it must be an in individual instinct that I want to be a boss. Once we create that, we will create opportunities. You will see the mind of a man, if the man has created something to go, a, 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 an Apollo to fly to the moon and be able to find a way of living in the moon while they study on the ground, what is you? What about you? It didn't take them, they are not magicians. Now, when you, the, all these things sound um, inspirational and motivational to some young people, but still at some point, you know, well, I'd say like they're block. They don't really know how to unleash what's within. How do, how do we get them to use their skills? How would they be able to identify their skills and commercialize that in a way that it's employment for themselves, even if it does not translate into employing other people, but it employs them and they're able to sustain themselves? How do you search within to identify what's in you that you can be able to use to, 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 to sustain yourself? Every individual knows what is their calling. Remember, there are two things. What you're told to do as a good profession and as a future, and there's something that's inside you tell you this is who I am. Every individual has I. And we are in the system that we are told this is what you should do. So every individual has that. Look at China. China, because people believe in I can, I am born to do. And they follow that. And you know, as I was saying to you, I was talking to the minister, there must be some funds, there must be some competitions, there must be some activities for, to inspire these people. You will see. There must be some, and, and luckily enough, because I was told that now the, 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 the structure has been already created, and they were so happy because what I was saying to them is what they've been working for, for the whole time. So I am, as I say, I've created that kind of platform around it you need to do it but there's still some funds but you cannot wait for the government you will never go anywhere because government come in every government after five years sometimes changes if you're like 10 years so the structure uh, the, the, their policies changes all the time so you need to stand as an individual and find trust me it is not how it is not where it is how that's what you say how it is you to look and do I always ask questions. Do we really don't have money in our pockets? You know, one day what I did, I was in one country I don't want to mention, and there was somebody there and it was always asking me money. And I said, okay, I want to give you a equivalent of 100 uh, leons to, to open up a business for yourself. They say, no. I say, why? I say, no, I cannot run business. I said, okay, what about if I do a new work for me? I buy that you sell and then you get, you say, okay, that's okay. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because no confidence. So if someone run and, and master him, okay, it will be that. You have people like that. But again, not everybody would be a CEO. That's what I'm saying. Because if everybody is a CEO, who becomes an employee to the CEO? I want to come to that fact, that point. But you see, you have people like that. Now you must have people who be able to identify, for example, I created something in, in uh, one country, sometimes I don't want to mention much, where I took the youth, I took one, I say, okay, I took five of them. One was good in management, did a management, the other one was a carpenter, painter, and one was uh, uh, doing what, uh, promoting, was more into promotions. And I say, become one team. Hmm. You, have, you don't have a job, work together as a team, get a little bit of fun together and do you manage them you look for a, for a job you one is doing the, be a team you need if you don't have this if you work as a team for example she's a minister of finance communication uh, and a uh, 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 minister of uh, promotion you see because she she does communication and she more into promotion because with the thing so everyone here has has a job to do and then this is how we raise our money together without anything. Just to come out there and spread the message and promote ourselves and that's it. So we need to teach, we need to have a program of teachers of teachers. This is, that's why I need to create a conference 
with the people and show them how and we do it practical when you look at business people well the most well the richest people in the world the bill gates the dan Cote, these are business people they don't wear suits and go to the office to work for people yes they wear whatever they like and people come to them with phds phd holders answer to them yes sir exactly because they're their employees yes. they, they, they are employers yes. i beg your yeah, pardon yeah. they employ people and minus those people if you come from a small scale you have people who well in sierra leone we say the fullers are very industrious people you would see they'll start as um, shoemakers they I go around mm -hmm. they fix shoes mm -hmm. next thing they have opened a cigarette box mm -hmm. where they sell mm -hmm. next stage you see mm -hmm. the, the, they go out again to with the shoemaking and the wife stays with the cigarette box by the time you know it in the evening that person would be selling roast meat mm -hmm. by the time you know it they own a shop next thing you know they're importing and exporting next thing you know they're millionaires they start small and go up most of them don't really care about what people would think oh how they look like what they're dressed like but we have a culture generally where especially for the young people we just want to feel you know that prestige and morale i wake up in the morning i have a job i'm nicely dressed i go to the office there's air condition all over the place i can brag to people that i am employed and when you put that person employed and that person who's doing business when you weigh who's making more money, if you're not careful, it's the business person making almost three or four times what you earn on a monthly basis. But we just care about the face we give to people that, well, <laughs> branding or packaging aspect. Right. How do we get our young people to see things differently to say, it's not really about creating an impression, it's about succeeding? Exactly, as you say, those kind of messages that you've sent are very good. We need people to educate them. We need to synthesize them. We need to show them. That is why, as I say, that always I go to a country, and uh, for example, I'm, uh, you know, I've been. Uh, we are uh, hosted by the Reverend Chambers. Okay. okay. When I went, when we got to the, uh, his house, we started looking at his house as a big house. There are a lot of things that are missing, and we started to decorate his house. Said so, no, 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 uh, uh, Reverend, this is how it is. Now he has to. I said, you pay this. I call his children and say, this is how we run things. You work here, you work here, take responsibility. You run and do this. This is how you show. So he's so inspired. He doesn't even want us to live. You've spoken about all these things, the idea, the knowledge you have, creativity. How do we get the young people? How can they reach out to you? For those who might want to sit with you one-on-one -on -one and learn things from you while you're here, is there a possibility? Yes, of course. I'll be, as I say, I'll be working with the Minister of Culture and Tourism, mm -hmm. and where we'll be doing some uh, 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 workshops, mm -hmm. where I'll be, you know, uh, working with youth, and you know, for them, I'll, first it will be a conference, of course, whereby we'll be talking about the problems they are facing, whatever, so that we'll come up with a solution. So definitely, we'll, it will be announced. Of course, I'll come back again to you and you know make sure that every little word will reach everyone so that's what we're going to do and see and go to them like you know make make for example go to uh what do you call uh of course even monday and uh, next week thursday we'll be traveling to to bo ah. uh, yes we'll be with the minister uh you know to show them the values to tell, tell them about the values of their own uh country and the culture and show them the 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 whereabouts of their own soul that uh and and if they can find that uh, the whereabouts of their soul which is their destiny mm. they'll be able to live with the within the exterior life so i'll definitely follow up on that yes. so um, those of you watching i'll broadcast that on uh on our social media pages so just follow the social media handles and yes follow those pages once I get a confirmation through the ministry on the day, the time and the venue, I would also share. So those of you who are interested in going there to be a part of it, you could go there and be a part of it. Well, I'd like to thank you all for being a part of my platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank but you. before we go, Stella is going to sing for us. So we would be blessed with your voice. Thank you. All right. Yes. So sing. Okay. I'm going to sing. Um a song uh, entitled uh, 
Malaika, which is a song for angels. Yes. That's for the angels to continue blessing us. Malaika, na kupenda malaika, ninge kwa maliwe, ninge kwa wa. Thank you. Bless you all. I wish you well in your Thank journey you. as we try to build Africa and Africans to see that vision that Africa is ours. We build it. We make it what we want it to become. Good luck on your journey. Thank and you. this is the end of the Phoebe's World platform for this episode. I'm Phoebe's World. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. And yes, we'll bring you updates.